Hello, Williams. Welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play another episode of the Golden Horde, the Rights of the Horde campaign. So, yeah, I'm kind of annoyed. I understand. Yeah, yeah. This guy, Kokand, although he's a vassal underneath the Oirat, he's technically a different country. And so, we don't technically have any forts occupied in the Oirat, which is kind of a, kind of a weird little argument to be making. But yes, technically, it's true. What's going on with uh, the Timurids here, by the way? What's he up to? What are you up to, Timurids? You're at war against the Mamluks. Why are you marching up here into the, uh... What are you doing up here, huh? You seem confused. You seem lost. The Oirat... Or the, the Mamluks are that way. Just so you know. He's, he's very strange. Anyway. So we, we did some poking around. We thought about it a bit. We're gonna go for the peace right now. Not We're not gonna push for a mountain siege. The, the thing we would have to do to actually take territory is we would have to siege down the easiest fort he has, which is here. We could go for Karakorum, which is mountain, or we could go for the fort, his capital fort in Kobdo, which are both mountain forts, which will both give us some serious, serious penalties. We'd have to have a negative two penalty every time we try to sit on it. We would also have a negative 25% shock damage due to being a horde and not being in flat terrain. So that sucks. So I've decided and, and chat has agreed that it's a bad idea to go for it. So we're going to go for this peace deal. We're going to ask for military access, even though we don't need it, so that we can cancel it so we get two prestige. We're going to take 208 ducats, we're going to take war reps, and we're going to call it good. We gained four whole prestige. Wow, that felt like a very worthless war. We lost 36,000 troops, 28,000 of which were our own. Uh, that was an expensive, expensive period of time in our, in our history. And uh, unfortunately, it's just, you know, it is what it is. We, we got to peace out. We can't afford to, uh, to stick around in that war. All right, we're going to immediately go down on no maintenance here. We have no rebels. We have the Mertian separatists in Amerti. Um, Amerti is something we're going to want to try to put down. We will be able to put it down pretty easily once war exhaustion has gone. And once we can park our army over there. Let's bring everyone that way, actually. And we'll bring these guys. For now, we'll split them in half. We'll have these guys march south and then west to avoid some attrition. According to this, we're making money, but that's temporary. Uh, don't don't believe everything you everything you read. Okay, uh, the next institution has not actually fired yet. At least we haven't gotten a pop up about it. So colonialism hasn't started. We can embrace the Renaissance as soon as we have 442 ducats. Muscovy's, fa Muscovy's fabricating claims on us. Also, let's take a look and see if any other provinces are getting close. 0.55 per month for for this one. Every province that does actually embrace it is one less province we'll have to pay for. I'm not going to stop mentioning it. I still feel like it's silly the way that this was implemented and that it should be based on... That's not owned by us. It should just be based on the percentage that it's embraced and not based on... Like paying paying full price for a province that's 99% embraced. It's just ridiculous. It's so dumb. It doesn't make sense. It's silly. And And the argument for why they did it that way... Or, or why they made it so that you only pay for the uh, the autonomy modified cost is because it got prohibitively expensive if, if you didn't do it that way. Well, here's a crazy idea. Make it so you only pay for the percentage you actually have to, to buy. That's a great way to keep the cost down, right? <laughs> Come on. I can't be the first person that's thought of this. It's like the most logical, most rational thing in the world. Anyway, I'm off-balled my Navy because um, I don't remember if it was between episodes or, or when it was, but... Um, I moved my trade around a little bit. I have a merchant steering here and a merchant steering... I don't remember where. And a merchant collecting here and a merchant steering over here and... There was just no point in collecting in this node. And there's... We're losing money by having these ships even owning them. So as soon as we get to peace, which we are at peace right now, I'm actually planning on selling these ships for now. Because we're just... They don't matter. They're just, they just... They cost us more than they're worth in having. So let's see if we can sell them to the Ottomans. He likes us. We're friendly. Maybe he'll give us a good deal. Um, he is at war still. He is attacking Dulkadir right now in the reconquest of Marash. Relatively straightforward war for him. We also have six out of four relations right now because we have our enforced military access. Let's make sure we cancel that. We still have forces inside their borders. We got to wait a little bit. We cannot convert any of the provinces that I would like to convert. The 21 month conversions. We are at 22 prestige. These, uh, these Persian separatists are getting kind of crazy. Urus has just died. Good. 
Asa wants troops. Asa's fighting against Shamar. Uh, let's see, I mean, what kind of deal would you be willing to give me here, sir? I mean, he's willing to give us uh, a maintenance multiplier here. Apparently we have military access to his capital right now. Want the cost of 0.3, budget surplus, negative reasons, he doesn't actually have a budget surplus. I actually want to look into this because we are desperate for funding right now. He only has 1.45 ducats per month in income. That's not very good. This must be an incredibly damaged stack. Yeah, it's it's one and it's 397 cow. I was gonna say, why is that thing so cheap here? All right, let's try to offer him something a little bit more sizable. He would totally accept this army. He's not willing to pay very much for it. And the main issue is, of course, he doesn't doesn't have the money available to actually pay for something that expensive. Um, I feel like we we have to to get some of our army not being paid for right now. Wait till we're here, and let's like actually take the time here to put together an army that we would want to lend out. <clears throat> Okay, we have two separate stacks, one with a leader, one without a leader. He's already losing his war. My goal, my idea here is that he's gonna... We're basically just gonna steal some money from him, and then he's gonna immediately lose his war anyway. And we won't have to deal with the fact. So cost per month is still super high. We still should probably lend as few as few troops as possible, right? This whole interface is such this is so bad. Like having to kind of, like imagine trying to lend, lend out Kondatiari uh, while playing multiplayer or something on speed two or three. It's like I gotta I gotta fiddle with the composition of armies here instead of just saying like what are you willing to buy, and then just buy it for Christ's sake, you know? Like I'm willing to pay this much for three cav. <laughs> Okay, here's an army, 04, you can have three of them. Done. Like, it's, it's so fiddly. Anyway, um... So clearly, he's paying, uh, 1.3x maintenance. Let's do it this way. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing it completely different. We're gonna go look, go look at the base maintenance cost of these damn things. They have a base maintenance of 0.57, he can only pay for three, and he's gonna pay more than, more than 1x. So we're probably only looking at, like, two cav is all that he could really afford. Right? That's 1.59, and it's still too much. I can't afford to pay the full price. But we can we can totally net 25 ducats from him. Here's two cab for 25 ducats. Have at it, man. It's great. Enjoy. I'm not gonna do much with him, just so you know. Be advised. We have already accepted feudalism, yes. We still need to accept, uh... Okay, great. The Ottomans are pieced out. Kandar has just paid 420... I need that money so bad. Ottomans, you have so much money! Give me money, man. Please, Ottomans, give me money. Like, give me some subsidies. Pay off my debts. You guys remember when the Timurids paid off my debts? That was funny. That was very funny. I like that. Alright, we're about to finally have troops outside of the Oryat borders. We can now cancel military access through him. Um, we are, ironically, still a great power. We're in sixth place, even though I am struggling financially. We're saving up a little bit of money here. We could take out a loan right now and embrace our institution. 443 ducats. Our loan size is uh, 223. Yeah, it's just one more loan. What's one more loan, right? Hmm. 1100 ducats in debt so far. So far. Hers is up to 90% liberty desire at the moment. All vassals' power relative to us is pretty sizable at the moment. Yep, and I also expect that uh, he's going to continue to uh, to get stronger here, because again, as soon as the Timurids peace out, 
or even possibly before then, we're going to see stuff start to defect to Persia. Okay, how are we doing on revolt risk and unrest? We have 70% here, 11.4 in Amerti now, jeez. That's pretty high. What are you doing? Don't, don't, don't try to make me suffer attrition. I see what you're doing. He's like, oh, I was just, I'm going to make you suffer attrition on the first because I'm a jerk. I just repaid a loan that I probably shouldn't have. That's eh, fine. If we, if, we, if we had renewed the loan, it would have been the same difference anyway. Okay, I guess we're back to improving relations with the vassals at the moment. With our, our diplomats. We're going to have to stay at peace for a little bit. The one thing I think is kind of funny is that on every single like episode, there's a couple people commenting saying... Uh, you know, all you ever do is go to war, it's boring. And then there's always somebody saying, why haven't you conquered the world yet? Like, two exact opposite sides of the spectrum. You can never please everyone. Some people want more war, other people want some peace. I'll tell you what, we only have one estate. There's only so much interacting with them I can do. We have negative 10,671 manpower right now. I think we will consolidate out some of our infantry. I attempted to press that button just to get the free general. Any chance we can revoke some more of their land? 67, 45. 84% autonomy over there. No. That's some seriously high autonomy. Must say. 84%, man. It's really high. Trade League for Genoa has just been disbanded. Ooh, interesting. So that means that Gen Genoa is only allied to France right now. <clears> hmm. <throat> France went on to the call, but he's really far away. And, uh... It would be very easy just to, like, step in and take a province. Granted, uh, we just got done talking about how we were always at war and how it's not always a good thing. When can we annex you? Vassal underneath us since 1493, so it's almost been 10 years since I... Hard to believe it's already been 10 years since I actually broke that relationship as of March. Gotta get you up to 190. That's gonna take some time. It'll take a while. Think about the institution spread, that's true. We could wait for colonialism to fire before we consider doing it. He's probably at negative... No, he's... he's uh, Okay, he's, so he's just not. He's, he's actually not going to be able... He became a, di a dictator is why. So he's no longer a merchant republic, which means he can't lead a trade league. And he also can't bring it back again. So that's good for us. Hopefully he just stays weak as he is and he embraces colonialism soon and then we can go that way. I'm tempted here to just take a look now at institution spread for a bit. I want to see... Uh, you know, when we're going to get a little bit more actually embraced in our country. The next soonest province. Looks like it's probably going to be Yedishkul. Seven more development. 1504, so about two years to go. We could do development to try to speed it up. We could also try to do uh, some more development in the gold mine. That one was actually going pretty well. 0.85 per month. It's not too bad. Adjacent province hands renaissance would have been pretty nice. Waiting on the Ottomans to peace out so we can sell our ships. Waiting on... Peace, basically. Hassa is still losing his war. Hassa is still not upset about us not using his, our troops here. He's actually got an army still. Hanging out in his capital or adjacent to it. This guy doesn't have enough troops to siege down his capital. <laughs> Kind of funny. Hilarious, even. Oh, man. We don't have the money to do conversions right now. Although we have 100 piety. Now is a great time for it. Wish I had level 1 advisors available. Huh. Getting really close to the PowerPoint cap. We're going to have to take out a loan soon. Timber is civil war. <laughs> 
Timurids, man! You're doing so bad! You're so bad at this game! Worse than I am. National Manpower Modifier. Uh, it looks like we're taking the, uh, the National Manpower Modifier. We can't afford to take anything else. What are you, crazy? I'm going to intentionally not let any of our troops reinforce because it's going to save us money. Alright, 91% liberty desire on Persia. Persia with his 10 ducats a month in income. And if we could just get you paying us taxes, that would be spectacular. Stop marching your damn army through mine. I, you're such a little bastard is what he is. These Timurids are getting absolutely annihilated by the Persian Separatists. I'm, I'm, I'll admit, I'm happy to see. We will keep Persia in line. I'm not too concerned. Kara now has civil war. Look at that. We're actually making four and a half ducats a month from trade. Astrakhan, 75% control. Not too bad. The rest of the trade power is coming from Genoa. Nizhny Novgorod. Transfer some traders downstream. Yeah, this downstream node here, Crimea, he's got a lot. A lot of trade power here. He's got Kaffa. Which actually has a coastal center of trade, and then Azov with the coastal center of trade, the trading post, and the estuary. So he's just got lots of provincial trade power in the downstream node. We could take some of his land off his hands and leave the rest of it for the uh, the next institution. I feel like we might be thinking too far ahead here because the institution's probably gonna. I don't know. It hasn't started yet. Poland has just declared war upon Muscovy. Norway's dishonored the alliance. Muscovy immediately declares, raises war taxes. So Muscovy has just been backstabbed by Norway. He has no allies. He's already attacking Sweden in the conquest of Savalax. He is winning his war. How weak is Muscovy right now? Muscovy's got 12,000 manpower, two mercs already, 35,000 troops on tech eight. He's ahead of me right now in military tech, but we could, we could easily catch up with him. We have tons of points in the bank. Lose stability or gain inflation? Well, that, both options kind of suck. I guess we take the inflation. I'm not losing stability right now. Alright, Ottomans are at peace. God, he just got 800 ducats from these two peace deals. It's ridiculous. It's unfair. Give me some of that money. Here, buy my ships. He's willing to give us 40 ducats for him. Good, go away. Also, can I have your maps? Just out of here, I want to see what's out there. How much prestige would this cost me? Mogostan has, has uh, transferred. Alright. Basically now, once every couple months here, I'm expecting we're going to see some provinces get transferred over. Our Kondatiari are a little bit disappointed right now. We've got four months to go. Oirats declared war on Yarkand. Alright, give me maps. 15 prestige. I can discover 15 provinces. 57 provinces in Africa. 37 provinces in South Germany. We have no units in a region adjacent to this one. So these options... are not even particularly good. Here, he's saying he wouldn't do it. Golden Horde and Ottomans consider the same two provinces to be of vital interest. And my negative diplomatic reputation. Interesting. I don't even remember which provinces I've said as vital interest. Well, I don't want that to come between us. But I'm not willing to let you have them either. I will spend prestige on Persia, but I don't particularly want to do it right this second because um, I'm hoping at some point we'll be able to get this damn mission done. Eh, let's be realistic, it's not gonna happen. Let's buy down prestige and. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Default 121, thank you for your subscription. He's at 100, 100% again. Do, 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 do. We're gonna placate local rulers a bit. Twice. Go negative, at least get our uh, prestige ticking in the right direction. Two of a kind. No other Canem is as brave as our Ibtsam. Military tactics and organization have always been of great interest to her. In addition to her daily sword practice, she spends many hours each day studying the art of war. During the last few months, she has become better acquainted with one of our most respected commandants. Sorry, commandants. 
and he in turn has taken our Kanam under his wing, teaching her everything she wishes to know. Now Kanam Ibtsum, Ibtasim, it, wh however the hell you say her name, has asked us to make the Commandant an offer, claiming that he would make a better, much better advisor than the Commandant we currently employ. In level 2 is half price, or no, we will just ask the Commandant to work harder. So 50 military points, or we hire a level 2. That's an extra one duck in a month I can't really afford. So I'm just going to take the 50 points. Sorry, woman. Yeah, Persia is a is massive, massive vassal. Kara has already gone bankrupt. Blasphemy. Gain piety, lose piety. Well, we're already at 100 piety. We lose the 10 diplo points and call it good. Eh. Just got done saying I can't afford to do it, and yet here I am. Trying to do it. Okay, Kondatiari. We have zero months here. On February the 28th, we need to revoke them so that we don't get the, uh... Wasn't honorable with our Kandatiari agreement. I thought you would die by now, Asa. And it's already been 18 months. Can you believe it? Okay, let's go very cautiously. More land affecting. Ah, damn it! I think because of the way that the time ticked, with the 28th being so close there, I wasn't actually able to interact with them, and then it did tick to the final month. So we did, we just, uh, whatever, it's fine, we got a little bit of money. We are dishonorable with our Kondatiari, our Kondatiari, excuse me, I think I've pronounced that word wrong quite often. And the land starts rolling into Persia. This is, uh, this is a little scary here, how strong Persia is about to become. We shall see. We're also very close to the point cap. I think I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just embrace the institution. What's the cost going to be? The cost is 474 gold. I don't think there's anything else. Ah, we should wait for this one. I mean, it's like, what, eight months? Can we even afford to stockpile eight more months of points? Right this, we're getting six per month and our cap is 1498. So yeah, we can go that long. Saki Separatists have entered our borders. Great. Naturally. Tell you what, I am going to hire another general. From the, the tribes. And we ended up with a... 3-2-1-1. That's actually probably one of the best generals we've had so far. Damn, Kazaki Separatists. Ottomans have just declared war on Syria. Ottomans are going crazy, man. They are such a blob, this campaign. In every campaign, aren't they? They're crazy. We need to continue to appease them before they murder us. I'm scared of them. As you well should be. Everyone needs to be scared of them. Okay. Uh, terrain. We're waiting a few more guys. More land heading over to Persia. Persian development is going to be ridiculously high soon. We're actually going to be over the force limit in a moment. I'm going to have to consolidate out one of my cav. And not afford to be over the force limit. We don't need full morale to win this fight, I think. Let's go engage. That was a rebellion where? Is it my rebellion or my vassal's rebellion? Ryzani Separatists, Independence for Ryzan. Got 15 troops. That would be my rebellion. Great. Fifteen. Got thirteen in the front row. Okay, I'm going to need to take <clears throat> some of the infantry. 
We want 15 troops. I've got three more cav in this other army. It's 14. I think we're just gonna take the bare minimum. Damn rebels. Just need to stabilize my country here, damn it. And getting defected now to Uzbek as well. Alright. Persia is gonna be just insane. Look at this. Look at this development situation here. Persia has 184 development. I have 406. He's already half my size. And I'm assuming most of this land is, uh... Yeah, the autonomy is not bad. And a lot of it. It's not looking too horrible. No guy separatists up here. Please stay out of my territory. Professor Ackley, Ackley, thank you for your subscription. Uh, I'm gonna point this guy. And these guys, like, back toward our capital. We'll grab our leader here. Alright, how are we doing on Rebellion next? We've got 70% 70, 70 for the Golden Horde tribes. The actual tribe itself is getting pissed off. Jesus. Ashgeard, what's up with that? Is that the gold mine? That was the gold mine. I think I lowered autonomy there. And, uh, because we're cruel, and we've got some issues with, like, Horde Unity and other stuff, that they're actually pissed. And could be causing some serious issues in the near future. We'll have to park an army there. Or, I mean, I can't, I don't know. We cannot afford to let the Golden Horde, like, the tribes themselves. Well, never mind. It's only 13k. Could be, could be worse. An Armenian revolt. It's not our problem. Good luck, Persia. You think you're so strong. Thirteen. I should have had... I should have had seventeen, not fifteen. Why did I do fifteen? We could have flanked better. Uzbek has just gone bankrupt. They've renewed their bankruptcy! Awesome! Good news for me. It's 16 in the front row. We will take 20 in that case. Okay! My god, all these all these Persian provinces are insane. Great, now we get to deal with the Emeriti Separatists. And we are capped on Monarch Points. Looks like we're doing some development. We've, we've got to just, we've got to do this. It's finally present here. Tin with its five development. This one, how much would we actually be gaining by clicking buttons? 1.16. None of them are really close enough to make me feel like it's worth like clicking a whole bunch. I think instead I'm uh I'm just not gonna worry about it. We're gonna just take out a couple loans here and we're gonna embrace the institution. Hopefully we only need two. 471 gold? Yeah. Let's just do it. We're gonna embrace the damn thing. And this is a, a very interesting thing. I want to see what happens here. Um, I'm hoping we don't just lose the 15, the extra 500 monarch points. Okay, we're over the limit and I believe if we don't spend it right now, we will get floored down to 999. So we do, okay, at least we didn't lose them right away. We can go ahead and buy some tech. 562 points. We're gonna tech up here. We're gonna tech up here. We're gonna tech up here again. We're now ahead of time on military. We're behind time on Diplo. We're gonna take a Diplo point so we don't have uh, corruption growing. But then beyond that, we need to take another idea group. And I'm leaning towards like quantity, possibly, or just going straight up innovative offensive. Even though it's boring, land leader shock's really, really good. 
National manpower modifier is really good for hordes. Manpower recovery is really good. Regiment costs. Land maintenance modifier is good. We'll see. I'm going to take a break and we'll, we'll talk about it between episodes. We'll decide what to do from there. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you again soon.